Good morning. Welcome everyone here this morning. We're glad you chose to spend your Sunday morning with us. Um, this is a busy week as it is Holy Week, so we hope that you will uh, join us again on Thursday for our Monday Thursday services and then uh, several activities next Sunday. Um, I have no other announcements, so if you will please rise for the call to praise. This is a day of joyous welcome, yet joy is tempered by impending doom. We Our leader comes humbly, riding a donkey. Blessed is the one who comes in God's name. Yet love prevails in spite of opposition. Give thanks that God's steadfast love endures forever. Let us confess before God our tendency, like the Jerusalem crowds, to profess our faith in moments of enthusiasm and deny our faith in moments of stress. Let us pray. O God, we sing and praise you, happy of heart and strong of spirit, when we are among those who praise you too. But in times of stress, we seek scapegoats to be targets for our anger. We betray those we love and who have loved us, and we turn against you, too busy to seek you, too selfish to obey you. Your compassion is without bounds, O oh God, for you forgive us again and again. You restore us to our right spirit and bring us together to worship you again. God of steadfast love, teach us how to be steadfast. Through Jesus Christ we pray, amen. God sweeps into our human scene, redeeming all who turn from evil and do good. There is grace, mercy, 
and renewed strength for all who earnestly seek the new life Christ brings. <clears throat> Once again, we do greet and welcome each and every one of you. We ask that you please keep the family of Colleen Egan in your thoughts and prayers. Colleen passed away last Sunday. Uh, services uh, uh, will be held this coming Saturday at 11 a.m. at Zwick's. Uh, calling will be noon to 2 p.m. on Friday at Woodcrest, and then later uh, at Zwick's from 4 to 6 and calling will also be one hour prior to the service on Saturday. The Lord is with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, your name be praised, for in Jesus Christ you come to visit and redeem your people. Help us to understand Christ's rule, strongest among the oppressed, among the victims, among the hurt and broken ones. Help us to understand Christ's triumph, revealed when love speaks the healing and freeing word. Help us to understand glory revealed on a cross. Then may we sing with children and beings of light, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is the name who comes in God's name to visit and redeem God's people. Amen.
the children come and spend some time with me this morning? Oh, can I get you to scooch just a little bit that way? I'm not as little as I used to be. <laughs> good morning. Good morning, good morning. I'm going to read you guys a little story this morning, okay? Let me bring it up here. Okay? Whoops. You know me, I'm not very technical, so y'all got to wait. You know that, don't you? They know that about me. I know just enough, and that's it. Okay. A rattlesnake bit one of my sheep in the face about a week ago. The deadliest snake that lives around here. The sheep's face swelled up and hurt her terribly. But the old rattlesnake didn't know the kind of blood that flows through the sheep. Anti-venom is most often made from sheep's blood. The sheep swelled for about two days, but the blood of the lamb destroyed the venom of the serpent. I was worried, but the sheep didn't care. She kept on eating, kept on drinking, and kept on climbing because she knew she was all right. And often the serpents of this life will reach out and bite us. They inject their poison into us, but they cannot overcome the blood of the Lamb of God that washes away the sin of the world and the sting of death. Don't worry about the serpent or his bite. Just make sure that the Lamb's blood is flowing through your veins. Now I've got a couple of pictures here. Okay. Now what do you think when you see this? Don't you go, ah? Is there anything cuter than a baby lamb? Have you guys ever been to a farm and a seen baby, baby lamb? Baby. Yeah. Okay. So what do you think when you see this? What? She wants one of these as a pet. I don't think so. Oftentimes, Jesus is described as the Lamb of God. And that old devil, he's described as a serpent or a snake. And you know, back in biblical times, a perfect firstborn lamb was sacrificed to God to atone for sins. And some other, I did some research, and some other animals that can be immune to snake bites are horses, hedgehogs, honey badgers, skunks, ground squirrels, and even right now they're experimenting on possums. But the Bible specifically references Jesus as the perfect lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And only the blood of Jesus can atone for our sins. And in the Bible, Jesus described himself as the good shepherd. Well, you got sheep, you need a shepherd too, right? So he describes himself as the one who would lay down his life for his sheep. And all of us are his sheep. And he's watching over us and keeping us from that old devil's evil ways. And this is why we are all followers of Jesus. Because the devil thought that he had won and he had defeated God when Jesus was crucified. But we all know the rest of the story, don't we? This week, through Holy Week, as we walk in the footsteps of Jesus to his Last Supper, to his death on the cross, and to his glorious resurrection on Easter Sunday, 
I want you guys to remember this, the words from John the Baptist in the Gospel of John, the first chapter, verse 29. When John the Baptist saw Jesus coming toward him, he says, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Now the word behold means to be sure and look so that you really see. So God is saying to us, you don't want to miss this. This week, I want you guys to fix your eyes on Jesus and hold on to him with your eyes. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Can you guys do that for me this week as we walk with Jesus to the cross? Okay, thank you. Our scripture reading this morning comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 19, verses 28 through 40. And when he had said this, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. When he drew near to Bethphage and Bethany, at the mount that is called Olivet, he sent two of the disciples, saying, Go to the village opposite, where on entering you will find a colt tied, on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? You shall say this, the Lord has need of it. So those who were sent away went and found it as he had told them. And as they were untying the colt, its owners said to them, why are you untying the colt? And they said, the Lord has need of it. And they brought it to Jesus and throwing their garments on the colt, they set Jesus upon it. And as he rode along, they spread their garments on the road. As he was now drawing near at the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees in the multitude said to him, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the very stones would cry out. May God add his blessing to the reading and hearing of his word. Please join me in the responsive Palm Sunday litany. The winds of God blow strong and compelling through the stagnant atmosphere of our neglect. We feel the insistent warmth of God's presence and seek to awaken from our authority. God invites us to join the parade of the faithful, to demonstrate for justice, truth, and righteousness. We are drawn to the Whatever our state of mind or condition of life, we are welcomed to this time of self-searching and worship. Blessed is the one who comes in God's name. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Amen.
please remain standing. Caught you off guard. Get those palm branches and hold them up high. <clears throat> Repeat after me. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes. Blessed is he who comes. Hosanna in the highest. Please be seated. You didn't repeat after me. No. We'll be doing that a little later. Today we gather together with Christians all over the world to lift up and offer Palm Sunday praises. We like the crowds. We wave our branches. We hail our king. We shout hosannas and the highest. We are excited. We are thrilled. We are amazed at this wonder. We are amazed at this man. I share with you a poem written by John T. McFarlane entitled The Song of the Palms. He is coming. He is coming. We hear triumphal shouting from the eager marching throng. We catch the thrilling music of the children's lifted song. The very stones are throbbing to break into acclaim, and all the hills exultant to re-echo back his name. Break all our fronded branches and strew them in his way. Our strength and all our beauty belong to him today. Today also marks the beginning of Holy Week, or what is called the Passion of our Lord. A week of ups, a week of downs, a week of contrasts and confusion, a week of pain and suffering and death. But you know, now that's hard to think about, isn't it? Let's wave these again. You can stay seated. Get them up high and wave and repeat after me. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes. Blessed is he who comes. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Yeah, you got ahead of me. The palms that we wave have been a symbol for centuries. They symbolize the praise and honor the regal respect showered on Jesus, who, by contrast, rides in humility on a little gray donkey, itself a symbol of peace, not war. I share with you another reading written by Douglas Horton. This is entitled, He Rose in Triumph, and it's based on Mark 11, verse 11, where it says, And Jesus entered into Jerusalem. In the days of ancient Rome, the highest military honor that could be obtained by a general was the triumph by, by which he celebrated the victory he had won and the power he had achieved over his enemies. He entered the city in a chariot drawn by four horses preceded by his captives and spoils and followed by his army. With this escort, he passed through the streets leading to the capital where he sacrificed a beast to the God of victory. The pathos of Jesus' triumphal entry into the city of Jerusalem lies in its one vivid contrast to the Roman scene. There were many contrasts, it is true, but Jesus was celebrating no victory past, but a victory yet to come. He was preceded by no slaves or spoils, followed by no army. He rode not on a horse-drawn chariot, but on the humblest, burden-bearing animal of the farm. But the one overwhelming tragic contrast was that whereas the Roman general knew he was entering a career of high privileges, this Jewish 
carpenter knew he was riding to his death. It was no dumb beast that was to be sacrificed. Jesus knew that the death that was in store was for himself and no other. Here was a new way to face an evil day, to ride in triumph toward it. Today we remember and celebrate that triumphal entry, his ride into Jerusalem. We wave our palms, we shout our praises, we hail him king, and we get caught up in the moment and the movement. Today we wave our palms, next week we stare into an empty tomb. In between these two images... There's the cross. A third reading entitled The Palms and the Cross. On Palm Sunday, one is given the picture of a man riding into a great city, hailed by the multitudes. There, bobbing along on the surface of the sea of faces, is the man himself, who is terribly alone, and he knows he is alone. The multitudes are happy and excited, eager in an exultant and historical anticipation. He has no illusions since he knows indisputably that tragedy is coming. He can see that these cheering throngs will turn against him to cry for his death. Just as intensely as they now hail his leadership, he knows that his intimates will lose their courage and play the coward. So the picture is one of utter tragedy. In a sense, it is more bitter than that which will surround his death. Here they are hailing him, then they will suddenly condemn him. Here they are excited with false anticipation, then they will be bitter as they watch a man go down to defeat. Here they are roused in their passion. Then they will be still as the flame of their emotion has died low. There is, therefore, a remarkable contrast between the symbols of the palms and the cross. Yet what is even more amazing is that when the new religion creeps from the catacombs to take possession of the world, Its symbols is not the palms, but the cross. For the paradoxical fact is that when we look at life bravely and unafraid, we understand how much sorrow and defeat there is in it. And therefore, any religion with power must enable us to face life as it is." End quote. For the past six weeks, We have been on a journey. We have walked the road to Jerusalem. We have heard his words from the cross, words that last forever. And now we have arrived. The journey is finished. It is complete, almost. Even though we have arrived, even though we shout Hosanna, even though we wave our palms, The mission, the plan, the purpose is not quite attained. There is still one step to be taken, one challenge to be met, one obstacle to overcome. Yes, today we offer up Palm Sunday praises, but it won't be long before we'll get caught up in another moment, another movement, just as we have this day. Very soon, another day will draw us into anger, denial, betrayal. And our Lord and our Savior will take that final step alone. My friends, we we have nothing for which to be proud. We have reacted and behaved no better than 2,000 years ago. No, do not be proud. 
of our actions. Instead, we must be grateful. Grateful that we have walked the journey with faith and commitment. Grateful that our Lord has not failed us. And grateful that Almighty God does not leave us alone to take that final step. Most of all, we must be grateful even in the midst of our waving palms and in the horror of the crucifixion. We must be grateful that the symbol of the Christian church in front of us at all times, the symbol of the Christian church is the cross, the empty cross. That basic fact, that basic tenet of our faith is always cause for gratitude. Yes, let's wave our palms in praise, and then let us also return next week and joy, join in gratitude for the empty cross and the empty tomb. And all God's people said, amen. and amen. Let us pray. Holy God, we thank you for your faithfulness to us. You are an abundant God, and out of your mercy, you have given us so much. Today, we bring our offerings and tithing, tithes to your altar with the hope that they may be used to make the world a more loving, compassionate, and forgiving place. May they be a blessing to many. We ask this in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen.
Lift high the branches that honor Jesus Christ. Lift high the cross that proclaims love's sacrifice. We are under oath before a living God. May we have no reason to weep when the cock crows. The promises we have made us. We seek to be loyal and courageous in Christ's service. God keeps covenant with us in all circumstances. The cup of blessing is extended to us every day. Amen. Mm-hmm.